The Focal Batiste have arrived and I'm here to give you my review after spending a few weeks living with them. I'll also be explaining why I feel these are the new sound quality king for wireless headphones. As always, there will be links in the video description for all the products shown in this video. But first, let me preface this by saying that this review won't be featuring any frequency response graphs. So if you wanna check those out, I will leave links for those in the video description so you can check them out for yourself. I approach audio by listening to my favorite music then giving you my opinions and thoughts. If that's not your cup of tea and you feel like dipping out of this video, there's no hard feelings. So now let's jump straight into it. So first let's go ahead and uh, crack open the box. So basically this is what you get when you order these headphones. So here's the box itself. Flip it around, that way you can see it, Focal Batiste, nice packaging here. So let's do that, let's go ahead and do the, uh, let's go ahead and crack this guy open here. Pops open from the bottom, so you can see just like that. Let's go top down there. So here we have the box itself. You got some QR codes so you can get the uh, Focal Name app. So inside the box, you get the carrying case itself for the headphones, the headphones are inside there. You get some books and stuff, but that's pretty much it for what's inside the box. Let me get that out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and crack these guys open. So this is the case itself. You got a little uh, carrying strap right here. Actually pretty nice, feels pretty good. Same shape and size um, for the most part. It's what you get with like Sennheisers or the Sony XM5. So basically kind of par for course. Feels nice, though. the material is actually quite nice. So let's go ahead and crack these open. And here you have the star of the show. And these are the Focal Batiste themselves. Sorry, trying to get trying to get these in the shot here. There we go. All right, Focal Batiste themselves. Let me see if I need to back this camera up just, just a hair right there. There we go. And that way you guys can see it just a little bit better. So in the box, obviously you got the headphones themselves. You also get a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable and you get a USB-C to USB-C cable. So that's for charging them up. Or if you wanna use these in a USB DAC mode, you also have that option as well. And there's like a little carrying pouch right here. So no biggie. Let's go ahead and pull the headphones themselves out, get this case out of the way. So yeah, and here we have the Focal, uh, <laughs> the Focal Batiste themselves. And these are some seriously, seriously unique looking headphones. Um, at least if you're, if you're not accustomed to what Focal headphones look like. If we're more of the general consumers, we're accustomed to like what the XM4s and XM5s from Sony or the Bose, things like that. So these definitely are a different a different approach to the way a headphone looks, but this is sort of par for course for what you get from Focal themselves. So definitely something to check out. But enough of that, let's go ahead and jump in to uh, what these headphones actually bring to the table. So first up, let's talk about that connectivity. So the Focal Batiste, they are featuring Bluetooth 5.1 with SBC, AAC, and Aptex Adaptive as their connection codecs. And that makes them compatible with both Android and iOS devices in my testing. They also feature Google Fast Pair, so you can can, uh, you can actually see one of those um, fast pairing prompt on newer Android devices. Now, in addition to this, there's also a 3.5 millimeter jack on the ear cup itself. So you can use these with an aux cable if you decide you wanna go that route, um, as well as the USB-C port, which doubles for both charging and for USB DAC playback. So you have both of those options as well. So three ways of connecting, you have the USB, you have the 3.5 mil uh, millimeter and Bluetooth as usual. So now, um, let's go ahead and do that. So as far as Bluetooth range, so basically, you know, when I have these, I'm wearing them in wireless mode and then I'll leave my phone in my office. I managed to get right about 40 feet or just about 12.2 meters in my testing. And I was able to put I believe it was three walls in between the headphones and the phone before I started hearing any sort of dropout. So a very, very rock solid connection. Now the, um, the Focal Batiste themselves are also featuring a multi-point connection. So you can pair them up with two devices. Uh, the, you know, I actually tried pairing them to a bunch of different things, you know, just to see kind of if they were going to be compatible There's no issues. Um, and I paired these up with my iPhone 14 pro max, uh, the iPad pro, my pixel seven pro, and also my windows PC. So multi point has worked perfectly as expected. So now let's move over to a little bit of video latency or you know video and gaming latency, and that's basically lag. Um, for me, it was minimal latency to be experienced on any of the Android devices that I tested with. They're taking advantage of that Aptex adaptive codec, which will either reduce latency as needed or will increase audio quality as needed. It's pretty dope, actually. Now, as far as mobile gaming is concerned with the Focal Batiste, gaming was actually pretty good with these guys. I actually kind of liked it. Um, I played a few rounds of Call of 
Duty Mobile, latency was there, but not enough to be a distraction for a casual player like me. But if you need zero latency, be sure to use either the aux cable or the USB cable for an instantaneous connection. So, you know, once you got them wired in, you don't have to worry about any sort of lag or anything like that. Now, let's talk about the build quality and the comfort. So the build quality of these headphones is, uh, needless to say, it's top notch. I mean, you're, you're getting top notch construction here, top notch materials. They use, it's all premium. You know, it's aluminum build with magnesium for these yokes right here to, to reduce weight, um, as well as using real leather on the headband and microfiber for the padding right here. So these are just seriously well built. Pads are super comfortable as well. So yeah, I mean, excellent, excellent overall. Um, they maintain the unique style of Focal's headphones. So if you've seen them before, you kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. And they also feature a glowing LED right here. So let me go ahead and click these on real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Check that out. See how it just started glowing? So, and, and that you can turn off. If you don't wanna have the Focal logo glowing, you can definitely shut that off if you wish. So I'm gonna shut those back off. But overall, pretty dope uh, in my opinion. As far as style, as far as materials, the combination of the materials and the design give these a premium feel that's unmatched by the likes of Sony, uh, Bose, or even Apple for that matter. Now, they achieved a perfect balance of style and build quality while keeping the overall weight to a decent level, I would say. Um, these come in weighing in at, I believe it is 350 grams, while the AirPods Max come in at 386 grams. Now, for comparison, when we're talking about lightweight headphones, we're thinking Sony XM5, Bose QC45, those come in at about 250 grams. So very, very light, but it's also because of all their plastic and their construction. So something to keep in mind. But overall, um, I didn't feel a ton of the weight of the Focal Batiste while wearing them because they do have increased clamping force when compared to something like the uh, the AirPods Max. So they carry a lot of the weight on the ear cups themselves. So overall, still very, very comfortable, um, you know, for day-to-day -day usage, at least in my personal opinion. Um, so now, like comfort, let's talk about comfort a little bit. So, so far they've been very comfortable for a massive head like mine. Just, just to keep that in mind, if you've got a huge head, you're gonna be okay with these headphones. Not gonna be a problem. The headband padding and the microfiber material hasn't caused me any pain, discomfort, or any hot spots. Um, usually with some headphones, I'll get some pain right here if they've got, um, if they're too heavy. Sometimes the AirPods Max can do that after wearing them for a couple of hours. So that can happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen. Um, secondarily, the oval shaped ear pads right here, um, you know, excellent padding. They're very, uh, very plush and they fit my huge ears perfectly. I don't have any issues with them, like with my uh, ear lobes or anything like that sitting inside here or causing any sort of pressure. So overall, super comfortable for me. And on top of that, these ear pads, um, they do pop off really easily. So at, at a certain point in time, if you need to replace them, you can totally do that. There's going to be uh, a ton of aftermarket support when it comes to pads for Focal headphones, which is always nice. Now, one topic that does come up with headphones like this is how's the clamping force. I would say that it's stronger on a large head like mine, but for me, all I did was actually stuck them on a box. So anytime that I wasn't wearing them, like when I wasn't doing any testing, um, I would put them on a box, essentially stretched out like that, keeping them at that same size. So they would sit like that overnight, um, keeping them like that for about a week. And now clamping force has been reduced. So overall, it actually fits me super, super comfortably. So no issues whatsoever. Now let's talk about the controls on these, uh, on these headphones. And they're very simple. So they're going with button controls and a switch. So there's no touch controls with these guys um, whatsoever. So that's kind of a cool move if you ask me. Um, some, some people like touch controls. For me personally, I don't mind going with just straight buttons. So no problems there for me. Um, everything is placed very well. Most of it is on the right ear cup with one button on the left side here. So here you have the volume ronker. So up and down, it has a multi-function button right in the middle and that's your play pause, double tap for track forward, triple tap for uh, track back. And that's also for answering and ending phone calls. You have the switch here that that's off USB, or sorry, off DAC and on. So he has three positions there. Right here is your smart assistant. So they're compatible with Google uh, Google Assistant or um, you know uh, Amazon's uh, smart assistant. I don't want to say the word. And there's your USB port right there. On this side, this is your actual like ANC uh, transparency mode button right there. So you can do that. It also has uh, you know single tap to switch modes or long press if you want to switch between soft ANC and strong ANC. So you have both options there. So overall, pretty solid if you ask me. Um, control wise, it's actually quite easy to learn. Pretty ergonomic. So once I figured out what all the controls did and exactly where they were, controlling them became a snap. So no problems whatsoever. Um, 
Now, let me go ahead and cut these on so we can talk about the app because uh, the the Focal Batiste, they actually do have um, some app support. So uh, you can get the, the Focal Name app um, on both Android and iOS. So let's see if it'll go ahead and pull up there. There we go. There we are. So there is the app right there and the Focal Batiste. So you open it up. First thing you see is the headphones themselves, obviously. Then you have EQ. So if you go into EQ, you get a five band equalizer so you can make adjustments if you need. So it's telling me I need to stream music for it to do it. Yeah, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, chill out here. Let's put some music on so that it'll, uh, it won't trip out on me. Here we go. All right, there we go. So let's see, if, all right, yeah. So now we see the Qualcomm Aptex Adaptive right there. So EQ, so this is where you can go in and make those adjustments as needed. As you can see, I actually give them a bump in the mid range, a little bit, nothing too crazy, but you can set your own presets. And then they have some built in, which is home. Uh, then they also have loudness as needed. And you can, you know, obviously set up your own in there, whichever way you want to roll. Noise cancellation, you have three, uh, three modes here. You have your transparency, you have soft ANC, and uh, strong ANC or basically silent. Uh, kind of odd that we don't have the ability to just turn ANC off, but you know, I'll, I'll talk about that a little, more, a little bit more in a minute. And then you have the LED. So you can actually shut off the LED or you can dim it if you wish. You have three different options there. I personally, I like the way the LED looks. That's just me. I know some people don't want to have that or don't want to have that flashy look of the backlit uh, logo. I don't really care. So I like the way that it looks. So I like to keep it on there. Then you have the headphone battery itself. And then it will also show you the actual audio format. So right now it's on Qualcomm Aptex Adaptive, but when they're paired to an iPhone in here, it'll actually show AAC. And then here you have the settings. So voice assistant, you can set it up for local, you can set it up for Amazon or for Google. Uh, then in here you have your about, this is where you'll see all the different uh, headphone versions, the firmware versions, things of that nature. So there isn't a ton to the app, it's actually quite simple overall compared to a lot of the other apps in the market, say from like Sony or even Bose or Soundcore, stuff like that. Um, overall, the app experience has been okay in my personal opinion. On Android, I haven't experienced any problems. On iOS, it has been a bit finicky where the app won't stay connected to the headphones. But I've been experiencing all kinds of weird Bluetooth issues with my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I can't say if this is the app or my phone that's causing the issues here, um, because I'm also experiencing issues with uh, Bluetooth on like my AirPods, which is crazy. So AirPods on, a, on an iPhone should not have any kind of issues. So just throwing that out there. So now, so now let's get into some of the actual performance of the Focal Batiste, and I'll be doing some rankings along the way. Unfortunately, I don't have the Bowers and Wilkins PX8, uh, so, so don't ask, I, I simply don't have them yet. So we'll have to go from there. So first, let's talk about the battery life of the Focal Batiste. Now, Focal was claiming up to 30 hours playback on a single charge with noise cancellation turned on. Now, in my own testing, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up here so that you guys can see it yourself. Um, let's see. There it is. So in my own testing, I managed to get 28 hours and 11 minutes, and that's on the strongest ANC setting. That's ANC silent, and we're doing the testing on Aptex. Uh, 27 hours and 36 minutes on transparency mode. And then with the USB DAC mode, uh, I managed to get 39 hours and 48 minutes. So overall, pretty good. And everything was tested at 75% volume with mixed media. And when I talk about mixed media, um, we're talking videos, music, things of that nature. So just kind of switching things up to give it kind of a well-rounded test. So so overall, put the battery numbers back up one more time so that you guys can see that. But there you have it again, 2811 with noise cancellation turned on. So their numbers are pretty spot on. Their claims are pretty spot on when it comes to um, to that battery life. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is, as, as I said before, that um, the Batiste do not have an off mode for the active noise cancellation. And this is why I did not include that in my test results. Not sure why they made that move, but it's something I'd like to see added if possible, because um, sometimes I don't want to be using noise cancellation, period. Like, I don't want transparency mode. I don't want noise cancellation. I just want to be able to listen to them um, in, in just a standard powered headphone mode. So I think that'd be kind of nice to see. Now, once again, as far as charging the earbud, or sorry, as far as charging the Vocal Batiste, you do have the USB type C port right here. They do feature fast charging. So 15 minutes on a charge, if you drain them all the way down, plug them in for 15 minutes, you'll get an additional five hours worth of playback time with these headphones. So overall, pretty good when it comes to battery life, in my personal opinion. So now moving forward, let's talk about that transparency mode of the Focal Batiste. Um, transparency mode here is actually pretty good. Voice 
voices and external noise come in clearly and with only a slight touch of processing in the sound. Now, sadly, it's not the best transparency mode that I've ever heard, but it can still compete at a high level. So let's go ahead and rank them here against some of the top headphones um, on the market. So let me bring, let me, let me pull this out just a little bit. Let's, let's zoom out there just a tad here. So for this, uh, for this particular test, we've got Sony's uh, XM5s right here. We've also got the Sennheiser Momentum 4s right there. And uh, this is my case for the AirPods Max because you know the case that they included is trash. Um, but here is my case for my AirPods Max. So here's the AirPods Max right there. Got the carbon fiber covers on them. So those are the ones we're gonna be ranking them against. So for transparency, let me get these all out of the way. For transparency mode, the number one, is going to be the AirPods Max. They are unmatched for their transparency mode. A close second, you've got the Sony XM5. In third place, we've got the Focal Batiste. And in fourth place, we've got the Sennheiser Momentums. Uh, the Momentums definitely need a little bit of work on that, uh, on that transparency mode, as I said in my full review. So just throwing that out there. Now, the transparency mode on both the Max and the XM5 are shockingly good with the most natural sound in my testing. Now, the Batiste were able to um, beat the Momentums now, sorry, the Batiste were able to beat the Momentum 4 by having a less processed sound to their mics, um, but you know, still, they still get bested by the other two at the top of this particular ranking. So just wanted to make that clear. So now let's move over to the active noise cancellation. So the Focal Batiste feature two ANC modes. They have soft and they have silent. With soft being quieter for, uh, sorry, with, for, with soft being good for quieter environments and silent be better for noisier environments. Now in my testing, I actually tested these up against 85 decibels worth of airliner cabin noise, along with 75 decibels of crowd noise. These perform much better against the steady lower frequency but the crowd test showed how they could still use a bit more work to improve the mid-frequency noise attenuation. Now, both settings work well enough, but I find myself in soft mode more often than not, being that I'm not always in like super noisy environments. Um, sadly, there is no ANC offsetting, uh, still to my surprise, but that's something that I think that should be added in. Now, when it comes to noise cancellation, let's go ahead and rank them one more time. Now, this is gonna look a little, a little similar to you guys, but here's how we're gonna roll. In first place, you've got the Sony XM5s. That's gonna be first place for noise cancellation. In a very tight, very close second, you've got the AirPods Max. In third, we've got the Batiste once again. In fourth place, we've got the Sennheiser Momentum 4s. Now, this was actually a, a close race, both you know for first place and for uh, third place here, between the Momentum 4s and the Batiste. Um, this is where, um, this is where the they, the Batiste and Momentum 4 kind of struggle. I'd say both of these can use a little bit of work here. For the price, I expected a bit more ANC strength from the Batiste, uh, but I know the focus of Batiste is sound quality, but but still, there's still some room for improvement here. Um, while these did a bit better on the lower frequencies, um, I would say the ANC on these gave you a bit more, it gives you a bit more um, cabin pressure. So these didn't have that issue. So that's why I kind of chose these for third place there. So just throwing that out there, I want to explain how I kind of rank them up uh, when it comes to active noise cancellation. So now let me get these out of the way once again. And before, before we move into the sound quality uh, section of this review, um, the shirt I'm wearing right now, as you can see, it says Paloma on it. This is a shirt that we designed to honor my wife Paloma who recently passed away and Paloma was the most amazing wife I could ever ask for and she supported my YouTube journey more than anyone else. So I want to honor her memory by donating 100% of the proceeds from the sales of this merch design to the Alameda County Community Food Bank. If you would like to help, please check out the links in the video description. We have tees, lady shirts and hoodies available and it all goes towards putting food on the table for local families in need. And I know she would be super proud of both me as well as the Hefe fan for stepping up to help. So huge thanks to Beats for Hope and DJ Bionic for making this happen. And thank you so much for your time. And just to be clear, we've already, just since this merch dropped in the past couple of weeks, we've already managed to provide nearly 400 meals. So it's, it's incredible what we're doing. The more we do, the more people can eat. So definitely, definitely something um, to do if you 
if you want to help out. So now let's move into the sound quality of the Focal Batiste. I know that's an important thing for a lot of people. That's what a lot of people are showing up for. So first, let's get this out of the way. All of my sound testing was performed using both uh, Apple Music Lossless on AAC on the iPhone and Koba's High res in Aptex Adaptive along with some locally stored FLAC and WAV files. So I wanted to make sure I was using the best source audio that I could for all the different types of testing I was doing. Now, sound quality, this is where the Focal Batiste truly shine. Now, Focal is known for the exceptional dynamic sound when it comes to headphones, and that reputation shows in the tuning of these headphones. Now, the Batiste also featured that USB DAC mode that I had mentioned before, and that allows you to listen to high-res audio files up to 24192 where possible. However, I didn't find myself doing this too often because the sound quality difference between USB DAC mode and wireless via Aptex was minimal, I would say. Now, just to be clear, the difference is noticeable with good source audio. I simply didn't find myself reaching for the USB cable too often since the sound quality over Bluetooth is excellent. But make sure you give this a try if you want a legit high-res audio experience with the Focal Batiste. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and break down the sound. So, first up, let's go ahead and start with the bass. Now, the folk habitees have strong bass response with impressive sub bass, but it's all controlled. There's no muddiness, there's no bloat in the sound. You still get that solid punch with hip hop tracks, as well as that sweet mid bass that doesn't hurt vocals. Now, drums and rock songs sound real, and 808 drums have that power that actually satisfies. So bass heads are definitely going to like these headphones, but you can also dial it back if you don't want that much bass. So it's kind of nice. You have you can have the best of both worlds here. Now, some of the test tracks that I used here were You Write by Doja Cat featuring The Weeknd as well as Bomb Track by Rage Against the Machine. And both show how good the bass response is in very different genres, yet still shining equally on both. So pretty awesome if you ask me. Now, moving over to the mid-range on the Focal Batiste. Now, mids come in warm and rich in my opinion, more on the neutral side than forward. Um, so I noticed like that I, I kind of, when I was listening to it, I kind of felt like they needed a, a little bit more energy. So that's what I did in the app. I actually bumped up the mids just a little bit to kind of bring that out a little bit more. And it definitely helped. Um, it brought more energy to the sound. So for me, these have the most natural sound mid-range of all the wireless headphones in my collection. Uh, live instruments sound so, so good here. Both male and female vocals have presence without being in your face. Now, some of the test tracks I used were uh, Unchained Melody by Al Green. Um, for the smooth vocals along with the live band recording. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful performance that if you haven't heard it, you need to check it out. So it's Unchained Melody by Al Green. Um, and I also used Miloras by La Sonora de Nemita for the lively female vocals along with that live cumbia instrumentation. If you wanna get your body moving, then this song is definitely for you. Now, moving over to the treble. Now, right out of the box, the treble on the Batiste comes in nice and crisp. There's no harshness and there's no sibilance but it's still bright and lively with excellent detail retrieval. Um, it can be opened up even more with EQ if you want to give uh, a bit more airiness to live instruments. Uh, there's also a wide soundstage here that puts you in the middle of a live band recording or symphony. Um, and by wide, I mean wide for a closed back headphone. Uh, just wanted to keep that in mind, not like the kind of width you get from open back. So just to be clear. Um, instrument separation is also excellent as well as sounds having their own layers and their own room to shine. Now, some of the test tracks that I used here, um, well, the first one was Mexicana Hermosa by Natalia Lafourcat. Uh, the horns, the guitars, the strings uh, backing these two amazing vocalists in this duet um, is a feast for your ears. Now, the other track I used was Waltz of the Flowers from the Nutcracker. And that's a classic that never goes out of style. Get some culture in your life. Add both of these tracks to your playlist ASAP. But now let's get into some sound quality rankings to see how these all stack up. Now... Let's see here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull this camera out one more time. There we go. Just like that. All right. So in first place, in first place, needless to say, is the Focal Batiste. Second place, second place, we've got the Sennheiser Momentum 4. Third place for me, we've got the Sony XM5s. And in fourth place, we've got the Apple AirPods Max. So just making that clear. So first place Batiste, 
Second place, Sennheiser Momentum 4s. Third place, XM5s. Fourth place, AirPods Max. Now, needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, the Focal Batiste are the best sounding wireless headphones that I have personally tested to date. This is why the title of the video says Sound Quality King. Their ability to present music in a rich yet natural way is a true testament to the engineers at Focal. When it comes to my favorite genres, classic rock, hip hop, old school R&B, and Latin music, the Focal Batiste easily bested the others in this comparison. While all of these headphones have solid sound quality that will satisfy most people, it's nice to have a true audiophile option that can live up to or even exceed the hype when when it comes to sound quality. Now, the only other wireless option in my collection here that came close to the Focal Batiste are actually the Edifier Stax Spirit S3 with their Planar drivers. But sadly, the build quality is not up to par on those headphones for the price, and they lack most of the advanced features found in all of these flagship headphones. So just making that clear. Now, let me get these headphones out of the way here. Pull these out, let's go get that out of the way there. There we are drop this back in a little bit. So constructive criticism. So if I had to give Focal any constructive criticism on these headphones, firstly, as I said multiple times in this review, the fact that there is no off position for the ANC, kind of a confusing move, something that I hope they can add to it. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, secondarily, a stronger noise cancellation effect. Now, mind you, I think if they go stronger with the ANC, this is going to affect sound quality. I don't think there's any way around that. I think what they looked for was a balance in ANC strength and still maintaining a uh, sound quality with Without EQ shift, they achieve that perfectly, but it leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, one thing that I think they could add, and I think it would be kind of cool to see, would be strength sliders for the noise cancellation and for the ambient mode. So you can really dial it into however much transparency or however much ANC power you want. Similar to what Sony does, similar to what uh, Bose does, or um, sorry, what uh, Sennheiser does, have a, have a slider that lets you control that um, to your own taste. Um, thirdly, in uh, in auxiliary, 3.5 millimeter wire mode can only be used while the headphones are in the on position. Um, so if the battery is drained, you can't use these passively. At least when I try to, it didn't let me. I wasn't getting any audio coming out of the headphones, which I thought was very strange. Now, seeing as how, uh, you know, headphones, or sorry, seeing as how batteries in headphones have a finite life, um, it would be nice to be able to use these headphones passively via the aux cable so they don't become a paperweight after a few years. Either that or Focal is going to have to put a system in place for replacement batteries, one or the other. Um, but this is something that I wanted to bring up um, because it's it's kind of odd to have a set of headphones like this from Focal, but I can't use them passively without having them be turned on. So not sure what happened there but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Now, lastly, um, I do feel that all of these issues can be addressed via a firmware update, but only time will tell if Focal will listen and make some improvements on this product. So now let's go ahead and do some call tests. Um, so the full capitis, they are featuring four mics per side. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they stack up against the other flagship headphones in this comparison. Let's go. All right, so here we have the microphone sample for the Focal Batiste. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, and here we have the microphone sample for the Apple AirPods Max. So testing, testing, one, two, three. Once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here we have the microphone test for the Sennheiser Momentum 4. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here we have the microphone samples for the Sony WH-1000XM5. So testing, testing, one, two, three. Once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Focal Batiste in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or even like a crowded train station, something along those lines. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Apple AirPods Max in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or even something like a busy train station, something like that. So testing, testing, one, two, three. 
And here we have the Sennheiser Momentum 4s in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or even something like a crowded train station. Something along those lines. So, testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Sony WH-1000XM5 in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or even a crowded train station. Something along those lines. So, testing, testing, one, two, three. As always, you're going to have to be the judge of the microphone quality down in the comment section. All right, so with all of that out of the way, uh, for full disclosure with you, headphones.com sent the Focal Batiste over for my own testing and review. However, there was no monetary compensation involved and they were not afforded any copy approval or early access to this video prior to prior to it being published. Now I'm telling you this because I believe in honesty and transparency with you as the viewer. As always, please be sure to watch multiple reviews before making that final purchase decision. I know my homie DMS, he just dropped a full review over on the headphones.com YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out because he goes into both objective and subjective. So definitely give it a watch. Now, if you're interested in seeing my video on the Sennheiser Momentum 4s, check out the video I'm gonna leave for you right up here on the screen. With that said, my name is Hefe, and I'm out this bitch.